Hello guys, in today's tutorial we're going to start to build a map or a puzzle where we'll incorporate all four pieces and we're going to program a way for the pieces to also be held in the code. Anyways, I'm going to make a map real quick and because the pieces are 100 by 100, each one of them occupies exactly one unit and the way that I'm going to do this is I will start the map always at 0, 0 so that's the point where the map always starts that's the bottom left corner of the map so i can make the camera go in a position like so so, so that that's always the a corner and of course i can rotate them do as you wish and to to make them aligned correctly just press v and this will appear select the corner and then put it there just like that and you put the piece exactly where you want and you don't need to make them, them be rotated in the correct direction you can just do this it will also work doesn't really matter but I like them I like to put them in the in the rotation that they should be although it's not needed and I'm going to fast forward a bit to make this real quick Okay, and I just made this little quick map. As you can see, the pieces are all aligned, but they don't need to be because, as you can see, if I play, because the real rotation is uh, of each piece is zero. It's not appearing here. I'll make it public so it does. But because it's zero, the pieces will always go to the default rotation, which is a zero. Anyways, as you can see, we we also got here a penalty of no pieces and these are needed because so that the dimensions of the map can be read accurately and that's it uh, now before I start the coding I'm going to make all of these prefabs I have a tag and that tag will be the piece tag so put here piece and then select the prefabs and piece there you go now all of those are pieces and of course these ones are not and, and that automatically applies to these ones with that done let's now create here a new game object and I'll name it the manager add component game object game manager there you go let's open it and let's get started on the coding so this is the script that manages all of the puzzle stuff or if you win, if you lose, if you move the piece, if you didn't it detects all of that and it keeps its information in here and I'm going to create here a public class You can, I could just put the variables, for instance, the width of the puzzle here int width and int height but it's more organized to make a class or a structure so I'll make a class, so public class puzzle and this is a class which will hold here stuff like the, the width, so public int width, the height, public int height. This is the values of the puzzle, and it will also have a public piece array 2D. So just make those little brackets with a Ver, uh, comma in there. You could you could also do it as this as and this will be a, a jagged array if I'm not mistaken. But I'll do it like that. And I'm going to call this the the pieces, like so. And what this is is a, a 2D array that holds on each position the script for every piece. So in, for instance, in the zero zero uh, position of that array, it will hold this script which we could also instead of do public piece we could hold the game object itself and it would hold the entire game object but this way we'll simplify a little bit our stuff in the future anyways you could simply just simply put here the dimensions of the puzzle which will be one two three so three width and one two three four on the height but because 
sometimes you could forget it and it would generate a bit of errors and also because it's cool to show you I'm going to create a function called check dimensions which will return the dimensions of the puzzle which will be a vector 2 so that we can change the dimensions of the puzzle in here so check dimensions first we need a, a variable here an auxiliary variable which will make equal to vector2.0 in the beginning then we'll make here a, 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 an array of pieces and I'm going to just make it game object instead of making it a piece array but it will do the same thing pieces equals to game object dot find game objects with tag and the tag is the piece tag with the lower with the uppercase yes just like that and then we're going to make a for each loop and if you don't know about for each loops uh, see the links in the description so for each uh, p in pieces we want to check if the transform dot position of that piece is bigger than the auxiliary because what this aux value holds is the dimensions of the puzzle in the x and in the y and what this we will do in here is if we find a piece that is more to that side then we'll attribute that pieces act to the aux factor. So here, if p, which is one of the pieces that we're looping through, dot transform dot position dot x is greater than the auxes dot x, then we want the aux dot x to be equal to p dot transform dot position dot x. And we'll do the exact same thing for the Y, so just copy and play and paste Y, 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 and Y. And after we do that, I'm going to put to do aux dot x plus plus and aux dot y plus plus. And the reason that I'm doing this is because for instance this puzzle has three of width but because the pieces start on zero so for instance this piece is on zero this one is on one and this is on two the dimensions that we see will be two so by adding one we make that the width is actually three instead of two and then we can just return the auxiliary vector and now on the start we can call that function so vector two dimensions equals check dimensions and now we must create an, an instance of that class of that puzzle class so what I'm going to do here is make a public puzzle called puzzle and just because what was that what that was doing was just declaring the type of the declaring the class this is actually making an instance of it and by the way for us to be able to see this on the inspector I have to put here system dot serializable anyways here let's make the puzzle dot width be equal to dimensions dot x and the puzzle dot height be equal to dimensions dot y and if I hit save, you see that it gives us this error because this is a float and this is an int. So just put here int, which is a cast, so that this is now an int. There you go. Now what I'm going to do next is, is the thing that actually assigns the, the pieces to, the, to this array that you just did here, there. So first we have to create the data array because for now it's uh, it has zero dimensions. So puzzle dot pieces equals new piece like that, and the x and the y will be puzzle dot width and puzzle dot height, just like that. And now let's finally attribute. So what we're going to do is go through each piece on the scene and we do that by checking if, if that game object has the piece tag so for each game object 
that has the, the tag piece we loop through it and of course you can put here piece for each piece in the array because this is an array we want to to make the puzzle not pieces and in this array we put the x and the y of the piece that we're currently looping through so piece dot transform dot position dot x and piece dot transform dot position dot y and make a cast over here because that's a float make it equal to the piece and now because remember because this is a piece script and not the piece uh, and not the game object I want to make to get the piece dot get component the piece <laughs> this is a bit confusing but this is just the name that we gave it here and this here is the name that we gave to the script as you can see here it's a class not a not a variable and just like that we, we made our piece script and just to check if that's fine if this did it let's see if the d loops through it correctly so for each puzzle dot pieces we want to check if the item dot game object and the item is a script so we want to access the game object of that script dot name and we want to debug this so debug dot log and put that in there just this is just to check if it's done if it did it correctly oops and here it's log my bad save and now if I hit play you'll see that here it prints on the console it prints the number of the things and as you can see it's printing corner which is this corner then freeway which is this freeway then a line line then the corner and it goes back down to this corner over here and it goes on online just like that which means that we did this correctly and that's it for today guys thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial